Hello and good afternoon or good morning wherever you are. This is Renee Rosales again with TexMac and Happy Embroidery Machines. And in today's <clears throat> in today's uh, video presentation, we're going to talk about some really key concerns that people have. And when you buy Happy Embroidery Machines, you're enabling yourself to uh, create a profitable business. You can do this as an add-on to your existing business, your existing embroidery business, or you can do this as a startup. We see lots of people who do both. And so in doing so and learning these machines, uh, we talk about in our marketing how happy embroidery machines are made in Japan, designed and built at the factory in Northern Japan to exacting standards so that when you open up your machine, so on the machine, uh, you can expect high quality uh, embroidery. And you can also expect these machines to deliver that kind of production over a long period of time to give your business an assurance that you can, uh, you can be competitive in the market. You can go for your profit goals or whatever it is that you're trying to achieve with your embroidery business. So, that's part of the that's part of the solution is getting a quality machine like uh, happy embroidery machines so if you're considering happy embroidery machines you're already there so if you found this video you're probably already doing that so what i really want to cut to is that we also want to share some of the behind the scenes <clears throat> strategies and other uh, considerations when you're actually going to achieve this. So some of that's obvious. So we're going to talk about some of those uh, things, such as number one, we're going to emphasize uh, the aftercare after you purchase the machine that comes with your happy embroidery machine. That's through TexMac Direct, and that's who we are um, selling embroidery machines throughout the United States for happy. And in doing so, we have decades and decades of experience uh, between myself, our support team, even our sales reps, they can share all kinds of advice that has worked for our customers in the past. And we are truly motivated to give you good advice because if we can't get our machines to perform, then uh, obviously it's not a good reflection on us. So we are highly driven to make sure that we give you good advice that also cuts through all that learning curve that you can get so that you are the buttons to push, the things to buy, the things you need, the techniques. And so that's part of the culture here at TexMac Direct. We share that very openly with our, uh, with our customers, happy machine owners. And also because these machines are so good and so well built, they also tend to last for a long period of time. I talk on a regular basis to customers who've had their machines well over 20 years. So we're used to that. We're used to keeping parts on the shelf. We're used to um, business cycles where people have had their machines so long that they've actually had employees come and go. And part of the support package that comes with your machine is that we'll retrain your new staff. We don't mind sharing new education and we're getting better and faster at it, especially in these times when digital media, such as short videos, PDFs, uh, photographs, uh, I, and then iPhones and, and FaceTime, we've made ourselves accessible through all those channels so that you can get the information you need when you need it so that you can take care of your customers. So that's the first thing. Now, before I proceed any further, uh, I do want to remind you all that this, uh, we welcome uh, comments. So I see that, uh, so I see that uh, people are uh, making comments. So, uh, and uh, we'll be responding to comments because I know you guys have your questions on on how to do this. So I'll go ahead and make sure that um, I'll pause from time to time to let you know uh, to answer these questions. And uh, we try to do this on a regular basis. So um, so it looks like we've got France here. So welcome. I know that you're um, you're a few hours ahead of us. So welcome to uh, to visiting our site here on Facebook and YouTube. And Andre, uh, welcome. So I know you're, Andre's a regular visitor on our webinar. So she knows that I give out a lot of uh, field um, field tips on how to really, really become very savvy with this. So um, I'm going to, so good afternoon, Andre. And um, so 
going into the topics, so one of the things that um, I'm going to share with you is number one, and I'll go through these, is, and we'll touch on these. You're welcome to ask questions on these. Is number one when you're getting into embroidery is start to understand the artwork uh, that your customers are giving you. And just, this isn't something you need to study, but your customers are gonna provide you artwork and uh, like a picture, a photo, uh, a logo. Uh, maybe the logo's on their website and they want it converted to embroidery. So you're gonna see that as a business converted over time, sewn out on your machine. And you're gonna notice that there are some little differences as really, really skilled digitizers, which we'll get to in a moment, are converting for you so that you can put them into the USB port on your machine, sew it out, and do this incredible work. So, um, so you see the happy logo, here it is, converted into stitching. So there are some differences, and there's some nice things up about embroidery that lets you give you that profit margin, like the dimensionality and, and how that's raised. Um, embroidery does small detail a little bit differently than on printing. So there are some considerations to that. Now that sounds like um, an entire science to delve into. And if you are a graphic artist, you have any graphics experience, that's probably gonna be meaningful to you. But for you, the business person that's selling embroidery, operating your embroidery machine, that's something that's gonna come naturally over time. But um, going back to that point is that pay attention to the embroidery that's out there. Once you're in this industry, uh, go out, look at your competition, look at the wider world, see how they make artwork and embroidery and see how that's done. And also, again, going back to my first point, take classes. I teach classes on, on this as well. Um, those are available to you as the owner of your happy embroidery machine when you buy it from Tex-Mac and we can go as in depth as you like to. All right, so I'm gonna move on to the next, uh, the next strategy tip. And again, I welcome your questions. So, um, so I see uh, Ramona's here. So Ramona's a great digitizer that's uh, out in the industry who's uh, been doing this for a little while like I have. Uh, she's uh, looking to buy a happy murder machine. Welcome Ramona. So I'm sure she could probably share some important things. And since Ramona is a digitizer, I'm gonna go ahead and bring this up. So um, you all have been to our website, you've seen Happy Japan Embroidery Machines. So here's a logo that is now converted into stitching. So uh, I know that you're here to buy an embroidery machine or consider buying an, buying an embroidery machine and you're gonna put that, in, uh, and you're gonna put whatever garments that you're buying for your customers and selling to them into a hoop and then apply it into the machine and the machine will embroider that logo for you. So. That's actually pretty easy. We walk you through that step by step and we're gonna flow into that in a moment. But the process of converting that logo, like the Happy Japan logo that you see when you went to our website or our Facebook page, the process of converting this is something of an art. And the beauty of, of, of running your own embroidery business is the profitability is actually in putting that garment in the hoop, putting it on the machine, pressing that button and letting the machine do the embroidery for you. The skill set that's required to create it and convert it into stitching is something that can take some time to learn. But here's the great news is that there are lots of great digitizers out there <clears throat> that have a lot of talent that have been doing this for a long time that can do this very quickly. You can email a picture and, uh, give them the requirements, what kind of garment it's on, like a shirt like this um, or a hat. So um, we'll get into that too, the differences. Um, and they will email you back the design, very small, transfer it onto the machine, you're ready to go. So you're skipping this part, learning the machine, making the money. The money is actually uh, really, really in for the most part, sewing, uh, embroidering that, uh, that design onto the garment of your customer's choosing. So you can lean on a digitizer and that is probably my first, uh, my uh, a really, really big point. Now, some of you who get into embroidery are creative folks that would like to do your own art. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, we also encourage that. In fact, Tex-Mac uh, sells alongside Happy Embroidery Machines. You can package really, really good software, the best in the industry, Wilcom, uh, 
and which uh, really uh, cr lets you create top-notch award-winning designs. So you can do that if you want, um, but like I had said, if you're in, into this to get profitable, you can shortcut this. This is a big shortcut. Lean on your digitizers. We provide lists of them. Ramona's one of them. Um, so Ramona, just for a free plug, but also just, just to let everybody know, we're very active in the industry and interacting with a lot of people that are out there. And when you buy Happy Embroidery Machines, when you interact with us in our online communities, uh, call us, uh, we're never very far away from sharing uh, those kinds of resources that you're looking for. And that's going to segue to my next point here, which is also getting all that stuff around the machine uh, that you'll need to accomplish this, like sourcing for garments, digitizing supplies. And so I'm going to pause for a moment, but let that hang in the air. Uh, I've got a couple of more questions. So uh, comments, uh, Brenda says, thank you. So, uh, so welcome, Brenda. And Penny, uh, welcome, good afternoon. And Canvas Apparel, what's up? Hey, all right. So waiting on their machines. So there are a couple of people waiting on their machines. The demand is high. We're anxious to get these machines out there. But in the meantime, take advantage of these videos so that you can learn a little bit. And also for those of you who are looking at Happy Embroidery Machines, uh, this is a nice glimpse into the culture uh, of ownership. We, we are very open we share a lot. So let's continue on. So thank you guys. So, so Tammy, welcome. Hey, good to see you. So, all right. So we've got quite a few uh, people that are, are joining us here as we talk about this. So, so far we've covered number one is lean on Tex-Mac Happy Embroidery Machines for our years of education uh, uh, experience, uh, support experience. I'll tell you right now, every one of our techs has at least 10 years field experience repairing embroidery machines, giving advice to customers. So you really have that huge knowledge base to, to lean on. And often they have more. Um, I myself have 23 years teaching digitizing, um, actually uh, also teaching embroidery. And, um, and we've got a few techs that have even more experience than that uh, in themselves. So that's the first point. Number two, Lean on a digitizer to help you produce your art so you can focus on your machine. All right, so now we're segueing into the next point that, um, which is talking about some of the th other things that you need, which is something that our, our um, sales reps, when you call into the 800 number, the 877-335-5206, um, they have access to, they're always so open to sharing. So, um, so uh, the person answering at Broderie Machine, do we sell to France? I believe there is a distributor in France. So uh, at some point later, uh, uh, I'll go and share. Uh, Happy Japan uh, Industries over in Northern Japan actually has distributors all over the world. So we are a US distributor only and we're focused on that, but you're welcome. We're glad you're able to see this. But yes, hopefully you can hook up with the, uh, the distributor in France. So, all right. Uh, now let's talk about some of that, all that other stuff, all the stuff that you see if you walk into a shop and you have an embroidery machine, what else do you get? Obviously there's thread. So let's, I'm gonna go ahead and cut the camera over to my little table here. And let's have a close up of some of the things. Uh, number one, um, there is thread. Um, there are um, all kinds of alternate hoops, such as I've already shown you a normal hoop that you would use for the machine. tex -Mac Direct sells all kinds of other attachments as well uh, that let you accommodate different sizes uh, and types of garments. Um, so uh, that's something that you can talk about. The best thing, and then we're about to talk about the next topic, which is focus on something that you are interested in that, that you wanna get into. There's need, no need to try and take it all on. So. When you're buying supplies from Tex-Mac, whether it's different kinds of hoops for different kinds of garments, um, whether it's um, getting thread, um, such as uh, Tex-Mac sells very, very high quality Madeira, as well as Rappos uh, thread that is really, really break proof that also provides a nice shine and huge numbers of colors. So you have that available to you uh, uh, through Tex-Mac as well. 
But getting down to a more generic message that I'm getting at is get quality supplies uh, from Tex-Mec. There are other distributors like Ganold. We also sell supplies from Ganold as well. Um, and also another aspect of that is stabilizer too, as well. Um, and we're about to get into that as well. But the idea is that uh, follow the advice of your salespeople and also uh, your, uh, um, your tech people, your education people such as myself, and we can help you shortcut to make sure that you don't buy every stabilizer out there, every scissors, uh, or have to hunt for thread. We'll get you the quality stuff. We, um, you know, we'll make a little bit of money on this, but the most important thing is we want you to operate your machine with success, whether you go with Madera Thread or other brands, uh, whether you buy stabilizer from us or not, we're gonna give you the kind of advice uh, that it's gonna take to, to, so that your projects come out great. So, uh, here's a little hooping aid. So there's all kinds of things that are in there. It's a big world, but uh, we'll help you shortcut to getting you the supplies that you need without having to buy the whole store. So uh, that's really pretty important as far as just getting set up. You know, salespeople will give you a starter kit with thread uh, packaged together. You have a nice little discount getting it all together. That way you're not having a hunt around. Okay, so that's the next thing is their supplies. Now, I've already said that it's reasonable to, to learn these inverter machines very effectively, typically in my classes, in my webinars. Um, and because of the intuitive touchscreen, that's really, really easy to use. People are operational typically in a day. So, uh, and what we're doing is we're cutting all the fluff out. There's hundreds of buttons on here, lots of things you can do, but really in setting up an embroidery job, um, you're only doing three things. You're loading designs. You're also um, you're also uh, fitting them to a hoop in the screen and then selecting your colors and you're off to the races. The special thing about Appy embroidery machines is they keep the number of button presses down to an absolute minimum so you, you can achieve this so that you're not having to learn an entire book worth of tools and, uh, on how to use the control panel. Um, it really doesn't take much at all to set up a job. So um, the ease of use of the machines is really, really, really gonna help you on that end. Okay, so um, so Jeff Fuller says hello. So um, as we're talking about, so hey Jeff, and then we're talking about again, shortcuts to quality. So these are all basic things so far that I've gone over. Uh, and again, these are kind of at the strategy level. There's obviously a deep dive more into anything, uh, any of these topics that you can get into as far as you want to go. But really, as far as ste generally steering the ship and, and where you're going and buying your machine, setting up your business again, just leaning on, on TexMac for supplies, advice and, and getting out there. And then let's also get into some of these business decisions, too. Um, I'd already said to uh, the next thing is focus on uh the things that you're interested in. This, these machines will produce embroidery on a wide variety of garments, whether it's heavy sweatshirts, leather, um, hats and uh, shirts, anything in between bags, totes. So um, you really can be confident about that. But the most important thing is to focus on the projects that you think you're going to go after. If you're going to go after corporate wear and go after shirts, focus on embroidering the techniques on embroidering shirts. And, of, and very typically hats too as well, uh, whether they're um, embroidering on finished ball caps. Um, and if you focus on those two things, everything that you learn is actually gonna help you in your techniques with, um, with sewing on other things too as well. So that's my next point. Now, if you read the mailer this morning that, uh, that announced uh, this, um, this presentation, I'm kind of going over those bullet points that, uh, that I wrote and sending them out. And they're really, really important. Um, again, this just really help, helps you cut through a lot of the, a lot of that huge wide world of things that you can learn and just really help you get down to business. Okay. Uh, nec the next thing I would also say is to also learn your machine, take the classes, take other classes as well on embroidery machines uh, and, and running a business and, um, and as you learn, um, we'll shortcut you to those techniques for shirts, hats. I often customize my classes. Um, so 
Uh, so going forward, as far as other things, um, another one would be also just maintaining your machine. And it's really, really easy to do. And in fact, just learning and taking classes, you're going to see how little maintenance they need, but do that maintenance and um, learn your basics. And that's another point is uh, I'm coming down to is there is a basic set of knowledge for operating these machines and, um, and focus on getting that done. Again, um, back to the control panel and just setting up a design. There's really only a few buttons to press uh, to get a design set up. Um, and, and there's fundamentals, and I'll kind of combine this point with the next one, um, if you read the mailer, which is that also start to understand the differences between the types of garments and fabrics. And again, that's through the education program. Um, and you're going to learn a, a general uh, sort of a generic set of setups, for uh, lack of a better term, on uh, for most classes of garments. There's, uh, if you look out there in your distributors, you're going to find that there's almost an, an infinite number of things that you can sew on. Um, so it can be intimidating, but when you really break it down, it only comes down to most of it come, falls into one of several categories. So let's go ahead and go over that right now. Just give you a live example um, and revisit some of the things I, I've talked about and um, as people are um, saying things. So, um, and Brenda's at, uh, commenting, how do you get on the mailing list? Um, just send us, um, you can send me an email uh, if you want to, or if you go to happyemb.com, is go to contact and just see contact sales uh, and just send your information. Um, just say, I'd like to get on the mail mailing list. We'll go and add you on. Um, that's something that goes out every week. It's an informational mailer. Um, and again, that's part of, you know, the shortcuts. Um, if there are new techniques and uh, tips that are uh, coming out, we try to keep our customers informed of and anything like that through the webinars, through uh, live venues like this. So good comment. So, um, and then Jeff's made a comment too. Uh, you know, and, and actually uh, Jeff, what you've just said, um, and Jeff's a happy embroidery machine owner, see him over at the Embroidery Nerd. I think some of you listening are already aware of what he does and, and what he does for in the industry. Another great uh, person like Ramona that uh, does a lot of service for embroiderers out there and helping people achieve quality. Uh, but he makes a good point, and that's something that, uh, uh, um, that's something that combines nicely with my next point, which is that you are, um, when you're in the wide world of getting things for your business, one of them is suppliers uh, and um, and suppliers, uh, as if you're new to opening up a business, uh, the basic strategy and the basic business model for how this works and how a lot of businesses works is once you get your federal tax ID, that opens the door to wholesalers, um, contact wholesalers like Sanmar.com, SNSActiveWare.com, AlphaBroder.com, uh, on the East Coast, CarolinaMade.com, AtlanticCoastCotton.com. There's hundreds of distributors. Some of those that I've named are some of the big names out there. And you have instant access to wholesale uh, uh, embroiderable and principal blanks that you can buy in quantity or even just individuals. And, uh, and that gives you an inventory basically that you can choose from and also present to your customers. And then going right into what Jeff is talking about is that they're there to sell to you uh, their garments. And they often provide information for you as the embroiderer and the decorator <clears throat> so that you uh, can be more knowledgeable about, about their products. One of the things that can be frustrating is taking one of their catalogs and walking into a customer's site uh, trying to sell a shirt and there's, and there's maybe hundreds of pages on shirts. So they, they all break down into categories. So take some time, look through the vendor catalogs, they often break down into categories so that it's not quite so intimidating, such as dry fit type shirts, sport shirts, uh, button downs. Um, and within each category, it even breaks down more like dry fit, cotton, uh, and, and other categories. And then suddenly it uh, starts narrowing itself down. But where Jeff has brought that up is that you can also talk to them about, ask them about 
maybe preferred, more profitable lines that give you a little bit more margin, new clothing items that are coming about, any advice um, on fit? For example, um, is uh, this is uh, one of Sanmar's shirts here that I'm wearing, and uh, it's a, a brand called Sportech, and you may want to ask them, is it big, is it too, um, do, the, do your sizes wear big, are they too small? I'll provide that all to you. So um, leverage that. Um, they often may have a vendor fair, go to trade shows where they're presenting things they're wanting to sell to you. So they're wanting to educate you just like we're trying to sell you an embroidered machine. So it's in our best interest to give you an honest education how these work. Because when you guys are out there succeeding, doing well for us, then uh, you're representing us and you're um, putting a you're putting a nice shine and helping us promote the happy name. So we are highly motivated to make sure that you succeed. So, so good point, Jeff. Thank you for bringing that up. Okay. okay. All right. Um, Pet mom, uh, very good point. Please, uh, demonstrate when we demonstrate the machines, include the older direct, the directions on the older machines without the touch screens. You're still out there. Um, Pet mom that's making this comment is a highlight of how wonderful these machines are. Again, I talk to people on a regular basis that have machines that are over 20 years old and they're operating out there and we are doing our best. In fact, if you go to happyemb.com, same place uh, where we have information about our new embroidered machines, if you go to the support section, we, uh, we are building a library of references for you for those old control panels. We know your machines last longer now, when I got into this and I joined TexMac um, a little bit after the year 2000, it was a little bit harder and more expensive to make videos. So there's really not that much out there. And in fact, at that time, Happy really wasn't big on manuals. Those of you who have machines uh, now know that we have excellent uh, downloadable manuals and they update them frequently. And we're doing videos, which uh, is um, because it's so much easier to do them now. So we can do quick videos rather than shoot a video like back then. And then it's in two weeks of editing after that. Um, so that's why the new machines have a lot more media available to them too as well. And we also have better support as Happy themselves is also providing videos and photography. And also they've gotten way better at writing manuals in the last 10 years than the previous 10 years before that. So we are doing our best because we know the machines last forever. We expect these machines to last forever as well. So uh, the newer machines just have better uh, media on them because these are better times we can do that. And the silver lining to this whole pandemic thing is that um, rather than go to trade shows, we are doing things like going live, shooting more videos so that you can actually learn at home. So, or you can learn in the shop without having to travel or late at night when you're having problems, there's a video on online. So take advantage of our YouTube channel, uh, venues like this, and of course our uh, very regular webinars. Uh, we're getting a lot of attendance on there, which we're really impressed with. But any of you considering that um, the happy burning machines for purchase for your business, um, we make ourselves very available so that um, if you're, as you get started, uh, another key shortcut is, uh, or one of the shortcuts I've always mentioned is we're right there by your side to help you if you need to reach out to us. So uh, great comment. So, hey, Matt, um, that's okay. Uh, you, um, you can try to read this, but you're welcome to, to, to get on here a little bit later. The, any of you all watching, this gets saved later. Um, even though this is kind of a general strategy uh, advice uh, on things uh, video that um, hopefully you all pick up a few tips. So awesome, Matt. Uh, welcome. So um, Happy's got it. Uh, uh, Matt's got a 2004 Happy. It's running like a champ. So just a typical... It uh, gives you an idea of the expectations you can get out of these machines. Made in Japan, they last forever. One of the things I'm discovering as I'm talking to uh, owners of other brands is that uh, uh, things that we never thought about before, like, for example, um, the devices that will sew um, uh, ball caps. And I'll go ahead and grab this here as well. So um, the... Uh, the and actually, all right, so that's, that wasn't in my presentation anyway, but anyway, the, the equipment, for example, that will sew ball caps, the driver, um, 
we don't think anything of just having that same um, device to run caps for the entire uh, length of the life of the machine. And um, some others may need to readjust, retighten, everything like that. So the durability, you're gonna have, uh, with the durability and quality of these machines, you're basically gonna, never gonna see some of the benefits that you get, which is that you're not going to have to make nearly as many adjustments uh, uh, because these are so light on maintenance and also because uh, they last so long. So, all right. Are there any service techs available to come out to your location? Uh, Marcy, in fact, I know Marcy's an HD, uh, owns one of our 15 needle machines. Go ahead and call the service department. As you know, our best tech is out there in your state, Ricky. So give them a call about, um, about, um, uh, about availability and scheduling. So if you have any questions and of course, Marcy, if you want, I know that, um, here's a, another reality of owning happy burning machines because they're easy to maintain. Uh, one of the, the things you can do is, uh, you can reach out to me or our techs if there's, you know, little things that go out of adjustment. For example, they're really easy to fix. We often walk people through or even share a video so that if you want to make sure that your machine is, you know, up to factory snuff, it's something that's very, uh, very easy to do. So, and then if you need something more, of course, reach out to that 866-838-2424 number. David and his team, including Ricardo, um, uh, will help you out with their machine. So absolutely reach out. So uh, three more years in the 20 year old club, absolutely. So, um, so uh, we're happy to help you, Marcy. I know that you're, um, you're doing um, some good things for Delmar. Um, you're doing, I know you're doing, uh, uh, I believe, is it called FRS, but basically fire retardant, uh, um, garments with embroidery. So that's an interesting avenue. But uh, either way, Marcy, just go ahead and take advantage of the education or and just reach out to us and hopefully we can get you going. We often do it um, without you ever needing a service tech. And of course, we're there to help too as well. So, so great comments, guys. And again, back to the main focus is that we want you guys to be able to be operational and running and um, and also not have to spend years uh, learning how to achieve that top quality. Leaning on TexMac, getting good, uh, uh, getting top quality supplies is one. Leaning on digitizers and also leaning on your suppliers uh, that you're going to accumulate uh, to teach you more about the different kinds of um, to teach you more about the different kinds of garments and, and the way they behave. And I'm going to finally go back to my, my, my last topic, um, which I kind of mentioned a few minutes ago, which is learn how uh, garments behave differently on fabric. That's probably the biggest thing. Um, and it's really not that hard. Again, there's an infinite number of fabrics, types, uh, variations, garments that you're going to go through. And you never know what your customer may ask. Um, I would recommend if you're selling wholesale to try and offer only what's in your uh, vendor catalogs uh, so that if the customer has, you have any problems with uh, providing that you um, uh, or if you accidentally chew up a shirt, you can easily buy that, replace that item wholesale. The next thing also is that garments behave differently with the same design. So it's really, really important that um, you start understanding that. Tex-Mac staff, industry webinars and classes and everything will get you down to it. But um, one of the more direct examples we'll go ahead and talk about is um, you can see, and we'll go ahead and do a little close up on this uh, shirt that I have here. This is again, a uh, this is from Sanmar also. And this is, um, and what you're looking at is the same design sewed out in different ways. And this one, I actually just sewed it straight onto the onto the shirt, and you can see it's really puckery, and really it looks kind of messy. And then um, what's happening with these that's so cleaner is that we're starting to use stabilizer. So I kind of mentioned that before. These are one of the things that you are going to to uh, have for each sew out. You're going to slip this underneath the garment, and there are different kinds of stabilizers. So we give out a sample packs like these to customers. So you can see, touch, feel um, what they are, what they're like, and you get an idea of their characteristics. 
and we'll give you a crib sheet on what to use. In fact, that's kind of back here. So the kinds of shirts that you're going to use uh, and, and fabrics that will tell you what kind of stabilizer uh, that you're going to use for each. So as you can see, as you use the right kind of stabilizer, you get increasingly good quality just by sewing it. And uh, that's one of the other things. Now also paired with this as well is that you're not only going to use different stabilizers, there are also um, different kinds of needles too as well. Uh, so you want to use the right needle, the right stabilizer. And then finally, uh, in that um, you're also going to use um, – you're also going to tell your digitizer what you're sewing on. So, for example, that stretchy shirt that you saw, which is a very popular dry fit garment, it's going to be a really hot seller now that the temperatures are rising. So uh, in, in anticipation of the business you're going to be doing with that, um, use uh, tell your digitizer it's going to be on a moisture uh, wicking garment or it's going to be on a hat. So this same design uh, on this dry fit shirt um, has to be done slightly differently for a hat, but you don't have to do anything other than lift your finger and say, hey, Mr. or Mrs. Digitizer, um, this is going on this kind of a hat. Or the other thing is that there are different kinds of hats. So this is a traditional, what's called dad cap or a brush twill hat. Then here's another popular brand, the Richardson 112. Things sell a little bit differently. So again, try and share with your digitizer uh, the kind of garment that you're sewing on, and they will make the design for that. Um, now, you may be asking, well, what if my customer wants um, shirts and hats? Am I going to have to pay for two different designs? And the answer is that often, Ramona, if you're there, you may comment, but usually there isn't a double charge because it's not much of an adjustment, so um, there may be some incremental charge. Um, and uh, and and that makes it still very, very affordable. Uh, and uh, no matter what the prices are for digitizing, they're way less than they were when I started doing this 20 years ago. And the turnaround is really fast and good digitizers, well, if there are any problems, we'll work with you and make edits on the spot. So, uh, so again, getting back to it is that learn how to set up your machine uh, or set up for different kinds of jobs. You're going to use different kinds of stabilizer. You're going to uh, possibly have uh, uh, possibly different kinds of needles, uh, and also uh, make sure that the design is digitized for that. And also, one more thing I'll tack on to that while I'm thinking about it is that some types of hoops work better for some kinds of applications. So you don't have to buy. There's libraries of probably a couple hundred types of hoops that you can attach to these happy machines. Uh, but your salesperson will ask you, well, what are you going to sew on? Are you going to sew on shirts? Are you going to sew on shoes, baby shoes? Uh, then you can add on uh, those kinds of specific attachments if you have something that's out of the ordinary. So, uh, again, the setup for different kinds of garments, digitizing, uh, good stabilizer, and also um, if there's any special hooping needs. And if you do that, then you're pretty much doing the same kind of thing over and over on these machines. If you focus on the operation of these machines, basic maintenance, and then um, again, learn those different setups for different kinds of garments, you're really, really cutting through a lot so that you can achieve uh, very quickly, maybe even within a few days, uh, really start to get a feel for how to handle the different kinds of jobs that will come through your shop. So I know that there are a few more customers here so uh, that might be uh, adding, um, that are asking uh, questions. Pet Mom, uh, video on the different functions of Happy Link, how to move around the designs. That's definitely in the works. So um, Pet Mom has actually brought up a really good point is that our list of online videos is growing. We're um, actively adding videos to help try to organize the videos so you can get to things more quickly. Um, if you're like me personally, I, I don't like to call support because I like to look at a video, try it myself because I'm not a very fast learner. I like being able to watch a video, back it up and say, whoa, uh, I don't watch that again 50 times. And I feel guilty asking somebody to repeat something 50 times. But you can do that with our YouTube videos. And we don't like to say this, but you can call us 50 times if you want to for the same problem. You know, ideally, you know, our techs are really good. 
I try to be as good as I can at, at showing you how to do it so that you learn it the first few times. But uh, that unlimited support really goes a long way, especially if you run into a new situation that you're, uh, that you're uh, not prepared for. So we're here for you. We have uh, at our facility here easily over 100 years experience between uh, everybody here at Texmac Direct selling happy embroidery machines. So, all right. All right, guys, uh, this has been a really, really, really good session. I've appreciated all of your questions. And again, uh, visit these Facebook Lives. This is also saved on YouTube so that you all can see um, little bits of advice, some of the cool things that these machines do. We want to help you achieve quality embroidery so not only that you can be profitable as a business, but also represent our, our brand, Happy Embroidery Machines, and really show the world how capable and how great these machines are. So guys, thank you all very much for participating. Uh, stop by um, Facebook Live again, we'll make our announcement. We're looking at Thursday next time at 2 p.m. And uh, the next thing we're looking at, at is the real numbers of embroidery and, and talking about uh, real examples of profitability and how you achieve that too as well. So look for that. Uh, see you guys next time. Thanks for visiting with us. Tex-Mac, happy machines.